Welcome back. You're watching Indian Open right here on Bloomberg Quindation. Screen is awash with red and, well, it should be that way because of the moves that have happened. We're seeing the escalation of the trade war now. Just last week, we were hoping for a remedy. And now, since Wednesday, we've only seen signs of escalation. And as Michael Every told us earlier, what would happen when Donald Trump wakes up and takes to Twitter? That's the other big thing. The U.S. futures, too, have corrected, by the way. So keep in mind, uh, keep in mind, it's not a very pretty morning that you're waking up to if you're an equity market bull. Let's wait and watch what happens during the course of the day. Important to take, a, take stock of how our markets are positioned as well because Friday was a day of a small reversal of sorts. Navneet Saluja, is, um, Navneet Saluja D'Souza is standing by with a quick FNO setup. Uh, Navneet, morning. How, does, uh, how are we positioned going into what is arguably going to be a weekday? Good morning, Neeraj. Uh, well, four straight week of losses coming in for the Indian markets and there's, there seems to be control uh, as of now for the Indian markets. So there was a sharp recovery seen on Friday, but no major positions were seen either on Nifty or on Bank Nifty Futures. Remember, the premium has been falling since the start of the series for Bank Nifty Futures also. So the open interest buildup was only between a percent to two percent for these uh, futures. But what is important to note that in the last four weeks when the markets have been declining, we've been underperforming the globe. You've got the volatility index also rising. So 15.19 was the closing coming in and almost 30% rise coming in for the India volatility index last week. In terms of options data, what's the range we're getting looking at this weekly expiry? The maximum open interest on the call side is at the 11,100 call and on the put side it is at the 11,000. So it's very rare to see a narrow range like this but uh, SGX Nifty is suggesting an opening below the mark of 11,000 today. So on the downside watch out for Friday's low of 10,850. There was a sharp recovery from there. I believe first support to be watched out on the downside will be that. But on Friday, if you look at the change in open interest, there were lower level put strikes which became active. Look at this. 10,500 for this weekly expiry saw the maximum open interest addition coming. And of course, you had other strikes like 10,800 and 900 also becoming very active in trade. In terms of stock futures, which were the stocks which were active on Friday in a weak market, you had Asian pains touching all-time high levels. So fresh long positions were seen for this one. Also, Max Financial open interest went up by almost 23%, indicating there were fresh long positions. Ashok Leyland has been trading around its 52-week low alongside the other auto packs. So shots were seen here. And you had uh, Jindal Steel and Power. The entire metal space has been weak. Short positions for this steel company uh, were seen. But very importantly, to also monitor what's, what the FIs have been doing. Of course, by now we know in the cash segment they've been in incessantly selling. But um, short positions continue on the index future side over 12,000 contracts were added and this is the ratio you never see actually 73% on the short side now and even on the index option side there is more of hedging of cash portfolios now being visible so uh, on the short side you had almost 27,000 contracts being added on the call short side whereas on the call long side nearly 18,000 contracts were added Neeraj back to you well thanks a lot for that Navneet so that's uh, the individual uh, nuances for our markets and the position that we have as we head into the trading day today uh, promises to be a tough start let's see if it succumbs to some more selling pressure looking at the global sentiment keep in mind that's that's the big thing we'll talk about what individual counters and the results and the news flow surrounding them are but the larger out setup is not looking positive uh, what to do with some of those specifics? Uh, let's try and figure that out with Avinash Gurakshekar. He's head of research at Joinder Capital Services. Joins us right from the show. Avinash, good having you. Thanks so much for joining in. Friday was a bit of a <coughs> short covering led rally. Today yeah. we'll leave out all of that. If you, if you do like some stocks as well, Avinash, would you put off the buying for the time being? No, I think, uh, Neeraj, it's better to stay put for some time, considering the fact that uh, today not only being a volatile day, I think uh, clearly... Uh, you know, I would believe that markets could possibly uh, be in for a rough volatile ride, uh, you know, in the near term. Uh, you know, I think clearly what we have seen in quarter one from the corporate earnings is that demand is definitely down. And, uh, you know, with sectors like automobiles, two-wheelers, uh, fast moving now, clearly showing signs of uh, demand uh, slowdown. I would not be surprised that, uh, you know, I think uh, apart from... Uh, you know, the short-term kind of positives which uh, most people uh, commented on Friday that there could be a change in taxation for the FPIs. I think demand generation is now going to be the key element and I mm -hmm. think that's not going to come back in a hurry. Maybe, you know, I think uh, it's a little worrisome picture. I think clearly quarter two is also going to be equally uh, challenging and that remains a key point. I would not be surprised that possibly we could see a lot of earnings downgrades post Q2 also.
Yeah, we're already probably starting to see some of that EPS cuts <coughs> by a couple of brokerages when it comes to the nifty wide earnings. <coughs> so keep that at the back of your mind. Specific pockets of strength and weakness. Two that we've already spoken. I'll take Avinash's view on those before we get to our research huddle for figuring out the rest of the stocks as well. Avinash, ITC, what do you make of the numbers? Do these numbers uh, make you go out and try and take a investment position in ITC? Or not uh, quite? I think numbers were definitely good, uh, uh, both the cigarettes and the FMCG numbers. And I think uh, clearly, I think this kind of performance will ensure that there is a decent support for the stock. But Neeraj, if you ask me whether it's a screaming buy and one should immediately go out and buy it, uh, I don't think so because I think clearly, you know, ITC has been a non, uh, you know, market underperformer for a long time. Uh, in this given scenario, it's difficult to visualize whether this kind of earning sustainability could happen over the second and third quarter. But I would believe that, yes, somebody who's holding on to ITC should definitely hold on. The numbers are decent. And uh, in this market, probably it could also possibly show a little bit of sign of weakness. But longer term, I think uh, clearly this is one stock which is actually delivered. So I would believe that, yes, somebody who wants to take a slightly longer term, you should wait for a correction. I mean, r rather than uh, immediately jumping the gun. Hmm. The other one, of course, which came out with what was arguably a really strong quarter was Deepak Nitride. Now you track it very closely and hence my question to you. Uh, in a market setup like this, do you think the stock will be rewarded? I think Neeraj, uh, in this kind of setup, fundamentals are not actually uh, giving you the kind of valuations one looks at. But I think numbers have been pretty strong. A two-time increase in revenue, seven-time increase in profit, uh, largely coming in from the expanded phenol capacity. And I think uh, markets would definitely uh, look at at least a near-term picture as to what is the picture on the phenol price uh, development plus the fact that now, uh, you know, with the volume uh, kick, uh, kick up started, whether prices of phenol would be sustained because that is going to be a key element for earnings growth. So I would believe, yes, the stock would definitely remain firm in the near term. But in the longer term, I think, uh, you know, there would be uh, question marks on whether this phenol price element is going to remain sustained because clearly uh, internationally also phenol prices have shown a slight dip in prices. So I think uh, in the going, in the coming quarters, I would believe it's uh, better to hold on rather than immediately buying it. But yes, numbers for FY20 as well as for FY21 seem to be a lot better considering that now they have a large volume push and obviously if prices remain at these levels, we could see earnings growth uh, sustainability remaining. Mm. Okay. The other big bond rebel, and just before we get to our research team, is what's happening to the monsoons. Now, yes, you are, if you're a Mumbai car, you would have been disturbed on Saturday, arguably on Sunday, because the rainfall was incessant and heavy, water logging, etc., etc. But purely from the fact that we started off with a major deficit uh, in, in, if for, for the country at large when it came to monsoons, and the kind of recovery that we've seen, because I, I believe the data as of last week seemed to suggest that, that the monsoon deficit is now down to about 9 odd percent or even lower, special yeah. distribution has improved significantly. So all of that, and that's the point really, right? What disrupts the daily life of Mumbai curse provide a relief to the hinterland. Let's get in. Somebody who knows this very closely, um, Head of Climate Research Division at IMD, Mr. A.K. Shivastava joins us right now on the phone line. Mr. Shivastava, good morning. Thanks so much for joining in. Uh, how has monsoon progressed? Very good morning, sir. How has is, how is monsoon progressed yeah. in the last eight days in the, in, in the country? <coughs> uh, monsoon has been very good, particularly in central parts of India and um, over the even Northern Peninsula, including uh, in Maharashtra. And it has covered the deficiency even up to, actually it was some 10 days ago, it was minus 18, but now it is minus 7. So 12% deficiency has been covered. In the meanwhile, uh, Maharashtra, particularly Konkan and Goa, Madhya Maharashtra, Gujarat region, uh, and parts of Saurashtra Kutch, received heavy to very heavy rainfall. Even many stations reported more than 20 centimeters, what we call extremely heavy rainfall. Basically, this is due to, uh, we have a very strong pressure gradient over the west coast. Their system forming over the Bay of Bengal simultaneously, giving push to the monsoon currents and to come inside. Very strong currents are blowing and these are leading to strong convergence and very good rainfall. Okay. Um, I, I reckon that the special distribution, the spatial distribution has also improved, yeah. Mr. Shivastava. Yeah, actually, no, um, except the uh, West Bengal, Jharkhand, uh, South India, Karnataka, and parts of the Kerala, most of the region now are, have received normal to excess rainfall now. 
Okay. And what would you believe uh, or what do you think is the current uh, deficit of the monsoon? I believe last week we had narrowed it down to about 9%. Has it uh, gone down further? Uh, as of now, as of now it is 7.3. And we expect that uh, what, what we have issued forecast around 97% uh, for the season as whole. Well. It is going to be around uh, the uh, same only. Uh, and we expect uh, this whole August, most of the part uh, August, it will have very good rainfall and IMD already issued the forecast for the second half of the monsoon and we are expecting 100% rainfall during August and September. Okay, just one final question Mr. Shivastava, more Mumbai centric because we have been uh, facing yeah. very heavy uh, rainfall. How uh, do you think the rest, uh, yeah, next 24 to 48 hours are like? Uh, yeah, uh, I expect that tomorrow, uh, after tomorrow night rain uh, uh, intensity will uh, definitely decrease. Okay, we appreciate that. It Mr. will not stop completely, but ah. it will not be a, a, some 20 centimeter, maybe 4 5 centimeter rain may continue. Rain will not stop. That I uh, must emphasize. No, which is fine. As long as it doesn't disrupt uh, the daily life. Okay, great. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. Shivastava, thank you so much. Tonight, after tonight, uh, rain will decrease. After tonight, rain will weaken a bit. Okay, great. Mr. Shivastava, thank you for joining in today and giving us that perspective. Okay, thank you very yes, much. Thank that's you. the view from IMD, yes. Uh, and as we said, Mumbai might get disrupted, the rest of the country in the hinterland in particular. Uh, good news and monsoon deficit to 7.3. Some positive for India in addition to crude price falling as well. So the rest of the uh, scenario is gloomy, but these are a couple of positives you need to monitor. We'll talk about this with Avinash as also some key uh, stocks in news because there are a few stocks wherein, uh, which are in news for all the right reasons, uh, maybe some wrong reasons as well. Nestle has come out with the results. It will be important to track that. And of course, there's a big downgrade on Reliance uh, from Credit Suisse. So we'll talk about that as well. Mishika Agam and Somit Johnny to talk about that. Good morning to all three of you. Uh, Mishika, let's start with you first, the stocks in news. Yes, let's first look at the key earnings. Astral Poly came in with results that were in line with estimates. Their revenues and net profits were both up 27%. Uh, EBITDA's ex EBITDA expansion was due to, no, EBITDA's up 19% and margins stand at 15% versus 16%, so just a 1% drop in margins. Strong Pipes performance was led by plumbing and agri segment and Adhesive's revenue were weak due to change in distribution model in Resinova. The board approves a bonus issue of one equity share for four shares held. Then we have uh, Bata. Their results were again in line with estimates. Their EBITDA expansion was due to the IND accounting standard. Revenues were up 11%, net profits up 22%, EBITDA is up 84% and margin standard 28% versus 15%. E-commerce and non-retail channel grew in double digits, whereas retail grew in single digit. Cost measures and scale benefits aided the margins as per the management. Then we have Deepak Nitrite. Their revenues were up 2.3% three times, net profits up seven times, EBITDA is up five times and margin stand at 24% versus 11%. Their numbers are not comparable due to the addition of phenol segment revenue starting from the fourth quarter of FY19. Now the strong performance was led by performance product segment and phenolics business posted a sequential dip in earnings. Other segments were disappointing. NIIT plans to consider a share buyback on August 10th. Blackstone and Carlyle Group are among the five investors that are, that are in talks to acquire a stake in Sriram Capital. All right, thanks a lot for that, Mishika. So a few names. So you already discussed Deepak Knight, right? But a few others in focus. Uh, what about some other learnings besides ITC that came out, Agam? Right, Nestle. Well, Nestle, yeah. In line with expectations. Uh, well, net sales uh, rose 12% and slightly ahead of expectations. Margins came coming in at around 23.2% against 23.5% and profits uh, rose around 10.8%. Now, margins were a bit under a bit of a pressure, but that's largely on account of certain input costs specific to Nestle. But uh, domestic sales grew 13% on improved sales mix. Uh, exports, on the other hand, fell 14%, but exports does not really have too much of a contribution to the top lines of, of Nestle, the, the exports fell because of uh, lower coffee exports to Turkey. And on the whole, while there has been a contraction of gross margins, uh, the other big key takeaway from uh, the Nestle is that it is going to set up its ninth factory in Sun and Gujarat. And uh, it is, um, well, it's earmarked about 700 crores and in, as an investment, which will be made over two years. And that, of course, will aid in, uh, well, the production, of course, it's going to be focusing on uh, Maggie noodles specifically. So on the whole, st steady earnings, and the big development is uh, expansion in 
well, the operations. Yeah, well, let's wait and watch what happens. There are a couple of other companies have announced that. I think Relax so announced a small expansion as well. So interesting moves. So let's see how it impacts. Uh, though not a very interesting move uh, on Credit Suisse part for Reliance, a big downgrade. Well, yes, it is a big downgrade that has come in from Reliance for Reliance. Now, Credit Suisse has downgraded the rating on Reliance Industries to underperform from neutral and they have cut the target price for Reliance Industries to 995 from 1,350. Now, according to the brokerage, over the next four years, there are la large capacity additions planned both in the refining and the petrochemical uh, segment. Now, this coupled with lower demand will put high supply pressure for these products and that is the first reason why the brokerage has turned bearish on Reliance Industries. Also, higher liabilities from crude payables, geophone financing, and east-west pipeline coupled with the view that Reliance Industries is likely to be negative on the free cash flow side for FY20 and FY21 was the second reason why the brokerage has turned bearish. Lastly, they are now also factored factoring in lower valuation for Reliance Geo because of the slower, uh, slower enterprise and FTTH rollout and because of weak Geo ARPU in the first quarter of financial year 2020. Now, because of all these factors, they have and they have also cut the EPS estimates by nearly 5% for FY21 and 22 due to lower refining and Chem margins let the brokerage not only downgrade the stock but also cut their target price to 995. Now, this is the second lowest target price on street by any brokerage. The, first, the lowest is set by Jefferies, which is at close to 990 rupees for Alliance Industries. Okay, thanks all of you for joining and giving us those perspectives. We'll watch out for most of these names. Um, Avinash, uh, Astral Poly, what did you make of the numbers? No, I think numbers have been pretty solid, uh, uh, in fact, uh, strong 18-19% uh, uh, growth on the EBITDA side, a 27% increase on the bottom line. Uh, they've announced a bonus of 1 is to 4. I think clearly, uh, you know, uh, the kind of product segment it, uh, you know, uh, caters to, I would believe that the coming budget has also given a decent amount of uh, boost uh, for their products and I would not be surprised that we could see strong volume growth kicking in even uh, for FY20. Uh, our sense is that, uh, you know, the, apart from the normal, uh, you know, piping solutions, they also have now entered the industrial adhesive solution space and that could be one area where possibly uh, some more headroom in terms of uh, top line and margins could come in. So I think overall a pretty decent set of numbers. Okay. <coughs> Watch out for these as well. The, the queues aren't the worst, right? I mean, if you look at the, the two or three names that we discussed, those numbers have been largely okay. <laughs> Let's wait and watch uh, if a sliding market disrupts that. But talk about the sliding market with a couple of our technical experts as well. Avinash, stay on. We'll talk more. But get in Amar Singh, head of advisory at Angel Broking, joins us right now on the show, as does Namit Daga, vice president at Yes Securities. Gentlemen, both of you, good morning. Thanks for joining in. Uh, Amar, uh, we'd start off slightly lower today. What would your trading position be? Because Friday was an up day, short covering. Today, that will get negated. Yeah, overall, uh, looking at the way uh, the markets have been, uh, Nifty bounced back because uh, it took very strong support and there was this bounce back expected, but uh, higher levels again would be uh, sold into. So if we, if we somewhere look at around uh, 11,000, uh, 11,050, 11,070, that's a very crucial uh, zone of resistance. Uh, whereas on the downside, if you look at it somewhere around, uh, if we look at the levels, so somewhere around uh, 10,750, 10,800, because uh, or I would say precisely 10,680, 10,700. That's a very crucial zone of uh, uh, support for Nifty. So the trend uh, or the bias definitely uh, remains towards a negative, but I would say that lower levels uh, will find some support. However, the daily charts clearly show that uh, there is uh, this bearish momentum is there to stay. So any pullback will be uh, sold into. As far as Bank Nifty is concerned, uh, Bank Nifty uh, is also uh, very close to its crucial support zone. So 27,000. Uh, 750, 27,600, uh, 650, 750, that's a crucial support zone. But again, higher levels will be uh, sold into and to uh, as far as Bank Nifty is concerned. Uh, so Bank Nifty upside would be somewhere around, uh, if we, if you look at it, so uh, it would be around somewhere around 28,500, 550, that could be a level of uh, resistance uh, on the upside. Uh, but uh, yes, I would say that the selling pressure uh, uh, will, will be there, but uh, there could be some support uh, for the market at lower levels. But we'll have to wait for uh, the consolidation because right. the daily charts are still not uh, displaying that uh, there is a decline in the bearish momentum. Okay. Navneet, uh, good morning to you. How are you approaching trade? Uh, if you are indeed negative, is it possible to uh, you know, take advantage of that view via, via the use of put options? Well, hi, good morning. Uh, 
Look, uh, uh, definitely the overall trend seems to be negative. The kind of positioning that we are seeing from the FIA side in the last couple of days, uh, it's been a quite incremental amount of shorting pressure. That's what we are seeing on the index futures everywhere as well as uh, and the stock futures as well. Um, the good part is that basically now uh, we, we are seeing that VIX started to inch up, uh, which, 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 is, which will keep uh, the traders busy or uh, uh, basically the, the participants will likely to see this wild gyrations happening al almost on a daily basis now. Uh, the VIX moving towards a 16 odd mark would give, you, uh, give, give me in comfort saying that uh, we are not likely to settle down that, uh, that easily. We likely to just because we are seeing a kind of an oversold, uh, uh, we are in an oversold market, so we keep on getting this periodic uh, short covering bounce on a daily basis now um, so to my understanding the overall trend seems to be negative and it's looking likely that now the trend is being setting up whereby the upside range is likely to be capped in the range of 11,300 on the upper side and uh, on the downside we are opening towards a level of 10,700 um, the best strategy uh, and such a setup whereby the even the global markets we are seeing the the walls are being started to pick up um, uh, they would be incremental pressure because of that uh, the overall weakness in the global setup uh, to my understanding, the best uh, strategy would be using the put spreads. Uh, um, I would be recommending a bear put spread on the Nifty, uh, basically using a bear ratio spreads. We're buying an other money put options of 11,000 on, on, the, on the weekly expiry for 28th of August. And simultaneously selling a two lots of 10,800 put options. Uh, we can create the spread in the range of 20 to 25 points. And I'm expecting if we move towards the 10,800 mark, uh, uh, we'll be able to capture the good amount of profit in this strategy with a target of almost 100 to 150 points. And uh, one can keep a strict stop loss if the trade doesn't materialize. If we happen to close above 11,000 for this weekly expiry, one can look to exit in this trade. Okay, um, so those are a couple of uh, index, or oh, that's the view on the index, and maybe some way to uh, try and play that. What about specific stocks? And I mean, I'll come to you first. What are the stocks that you're recommending this morning? Well, look, uh, uh, our theory has been completely clear that basically we look to find out uh, the, the winners which have been holding on in the falling market as well. Uh, one stock which caught my eye was uh, Asian Paint. This stock is defining gravity. It's looking likely that it's in something different or, uh, orbit altogether. It's, uh, the stock has created a fresh lifetime high near that 15 or 15.50 odd mark. Uh, to my understanding, um, any weakness in the morning should be looking to accumulate this stock uh, with stop loss on the lower side of 14.18. Uh, we've seen a good amount of incremental long uh, long coming into the position as well as chart technical breakout on the higher side of above 1500 levels to my understanding the stock can head towards the 1600 out mark uh, with a stop loss of 1480 one can look to buy initial dips that we are getting in, in the morning uh, second stock would be on the sell side um, overall metal spec seems to be uh, looking likely that they have broken down on the downside and uh, the kind of pressure that we've seen in the global commodities it's looking likely that uh, the downside momentum is likely to continue uh, Tata Steel as well as Indalco both are my sell pick but today uh, on the morning if you're getting in the range of 410 to 407 on Tata Steel one can look to short with a stop loss on the on the higher side of two uh, 421 and uh, one can look to expect uh, the stock moving towards 3, 370 to 380 mark on the downside my initial target would be 391 can uh, review the position after that okay uh, what about you Amar your ideas yeah I would say that I've got two buys in this market and uh, the first one is uh, Gale uh, what we are seeing here is that uh, Gale has uh, corrected significantly and uh, uh, overall uh, what we see some of the indicators from almost uh, uh, the start of June from 180 levels, it's corrected all the way to 127 or so. And uh, some of the indicators are clearly uh, displaying the fact that this could be a turnaround for uh, Gale. Uh, the overall trend uh, still remains negative, but there is a possibility, high possibility of a bounce back from the current levels. So uh, Gale is one stock one can look at. So any dip towards 123, 124 levels uh, can be used as a buying opportunity with a stop loss of 118.7 and a target of 137 in the short term. And the second stock to look at is Glenmark Pharma. Uh, this is one stock which is not, uh, uh, which did correct significantly earlier, but over the last uh, almost six to uh, seven trading sessions, uh, it's been trading overall positive. And there's also, uh, I would say, some uh, bullish divergence on the daily charts. It's at very crucial support uh, levels on various time frames. So this is one stock one can uh, look at uh, buying. So any pullback towards uh, 410, 15 uh, levels can be used as a buying opportunity with a stop loss of. 393 and a target of 449 in the short term. 
Okay, so we'll watch out for these stocks as all show. Watch out for a stock that our special segment, the, our special segment Bloomberg Edge would be indicating. Remember, that's the segment where Niyash Upadhyay tells us about a pattern that the Bloomberg terminal has thrown up on a stock. Yash, what's the stock on your radar today? Morning, Neeraj. So we're looking at DV's lab, and uh, I'll, I'll stay with the trend, which is on the downside. Uh, so there's a sell signal coming in on DV's lab uh, with the trender indicator, uh, the proprietary Bloomberg indicator, giving a sell signal. Well, like we always do, let's first know what the trender indicator is. It basically uses the average true range for the purpose of calculation and helps generate a buy or sell signal uh, and also helps manage your stop loss. How do you interpret it? You go long when the trender line changes its color from red to green, uh, and you go short when it flips its color from green to red, which is exactly the case. Uh, with DV's lab now. For the last three trading sessions, the stock has been uh, falling and has formed uh, three black crows on the daily time frame chart as well. Uh, the green line, which is the trend line, that's at the mark of 16.09.5. Uh, the stock closed yesterday below that mark, around the mark of 15.98. Uh, uh, for the last two trading sessions, on, on a daily basis, the lows have been below the trend line, but it did not close below that mark, uh, is why we didn't see this happening earlier. But with, yes, uh, with, the, with the move on on Friday, the stock has uh, given a negative crossover, and with that, the trender is indicating that you know we could see a fresh bout of selling coming in for DV's lab. Okay, and Yash, typically, uh, how well has this trender indicator worked for DV's in the past? So five out of the last eight times, Neeraj, that the, tre that the trender indicator has given a negative call. The stock, on an average, over the next one month period, on a closing basis, has fallen more than five percent. Fallen more than five percent. Okay. We will watch out for a Divi's lab in the session today. Thanks, Yash. That's the Bloomberg terminal giving you an, an indication that Divi's looks weak and could be sold. So do watch out uh, for Divi's lab as well. A stock that would be in focus would be the India Bulls uh, group. Now, two or three things happening out there, Avinash. Uh, one, India Bulls housing, of course, was down about 6% in Friday's trade. Even on a day when the Nifty did half okay. But this whole news about uh, maybe the embassy deal called off, maybe somebody else looking to buy a stake. So lots of news flow surrounding it. What would you advise somebody to do with India Bulls Housing Finance currently? No, I think, Neeraj, looking at the price trend, uh, I would believe that, uh, you know, I think it's better to stay away. I think uh, clearly the Lakshmi Vilas Bank uh, merger is yet uh, not finalized. Uh, and I think that is going to be the near-term trigger point. I think uh, markets are looking at the fact that even if this merger goes through, it's going to be an uh, extremely challenging exercise to make this bank uh, profitable because uh, as of now, the bank continues to make losses. Uh, I would believe that, you know, considering the kind of negative news flow we have been hearing on this stock for quite some time, off late, uh, the recent news flow has actually damaged the stock sentiment further. Uh, I would believe that it's better to wait for at least some more clarity on the merger and hopefully on the numbers. I don't think uh, we could be seeing a strong set of numbers, especially on the loan book front, on the asset quality side. And I think these numbers, if they do show a kind of stress in the coming quarters, uh, that could definitely have a further impact on the stock. So I think it's better to stay away. I think rather than uh, India Bulls, I think some Something like an HDFC, you know, from the housing finance space could be a more stable choice. I think pretty solid set of numbers. Retail growth has also been pretty good. So I would believe that, you know, investors should now bet on something which is more sustainable and more uh, stronger enough to, you know, actually weather this kind of market. Hmm. The other um, two counters, Avinash, belonging to the auto space but under intense pressure, Ashok Leyland and an auto ancillary really, JK Tire, which came out with numbers which are very different from the rest of the tire pack. What do you do here fundamentally with both of these? No, I think uh, both these companies, uh, Neeraj, uh, reported a poor set of numbers. Uh, in fact, JK has reported a very uh, disappointing set of numbers, a 70% drop in profit. And I think uh, going forward, you know, their exposure is largely to the passenger car and the commercial vehicle OEM segment. So I think clearly, uh, at least in the near term, at least for the next uh, one or two quarters, it looks very unlikely that volume growth is going to kick in. And uh, without volume growth, I think uh, obviously, you know, it would obviously hurt their operating EBITDA and operating leverage quite significantly. So I think it's an avoid. Uh, I would believe Ashok Leyland definitely has beaten, been beaten down quite badly and hopefully I think, uh, you know, uh, you know, if some policy kind of uh, initiatives by the government do come in, like the scrappage policy is expected from a long time, only then we could see some sort of demand uh, coming back in the near term and that too for a momentum uh, kind of uh, level. Uh, in the near term, I think commercial vehicle space is definitely going through a lot of pain and I think uh, Ashok Leland being a directly focused player on the domestic market, uh, we could see a little more pain at least, you know, till December. So I think here also, uh, although the stock has been beaten down quite badly, I wouldn't be surprised that it could be a market underperformer for some more time. Okay, 
So watch out. Uh, you know, the other one, of course, JK Tire. And I, I think what the reaction to companies like JK Tire, Ashok Leyland, care ratings, the last three or four sessions, if you just look at the last seven-day chart, it will show you how badly the stock got beaten down and just goes to show that bad news are not getting punished just for one day. The punishment continues. Seven days, 35%, but the larger portion of the move has happened in the last two or three sessions. So do watch out for those names as well. Just very quickly, uh, two or three names that came out with good set of numbers as well. It was not all gloom and doom, really. GSPL was good, Equitas was good, AB Capital seemed half okay, and JK Cement seemed okay. Avinash, one out of these names, very quickly. I think JK Cements definitely has done well and I think uh, this has been the story across the cement sector while volume has, growth has not been very significant. Uh, pricing Neeraj has been very strong and I think this uh, momentum of pricing is going to continue. So I would believe that uh, given the kind of uh, results which you mentioned, I think JK Cements sim uh, seem to be the best positioned and I think any weakness you know, in this kind of market for JK Cements should be uh, used as an opportunity to accumulate. Okay, we will watch out for all of these. Um, about 50 seconds left. I mean, I stay on. So much more to talk about. Uh, but 50 seconds left for the markets to kickstart trade. Uh, safe to assume that we will start off lower. The only question is, can we succumb to some more selling pressure or would it be a lot more reasonable? That's the key question that you have to monitor. There are some earnings as well that we will talk about. So lots of things uh, to focus on. And on the other side of uh, the market open, we'll be joined by the founder and CEO of Magat Capital, Vipul Prasad. So you should be joining in and very important to talk to him about all of these macro developments. But 20 seconds left. Asia will start off on a weak footing. That screen is already showing that. And the SGX Nifty is weakened considerably during the course of the first one hour of the show. We are now down about 93 points on the SGX Nifty. When we started off, it was about half a percent or 0.6%. So it's weakened considerably and this shouldn't come as a surprise. But here's how the, the pre-open rates are starting off. In the red for sure, I mean, this will, even if it's a green, it's, it'll very quickly correct itself. We will start off in the red. Uh, let's watch out, let's um, monitor some stocks and what some individual names are throwing up at the large cap and first and then we'll move to the mid caps. Reliance industry should come up. There's a big downgrade there and that will that could be one stock that could be reacting today, so do watch out. Uh, India Bulls Housing, certainly a stock in focus. That whole India Bulls group is in focus. Do watch out for what happens to India Bulls Housing Finance in the session today, likely to start off lower. Auto Pack maybe had, has had a few up days. Looks like, to a lot of people, looks like bottoming out, but you never know. So Maruti, m, &M Bajaj Auto, Hido Motocorp, Aishar Motors, all of those would be in focus. Bajaj Finance, which recovered quite smartly in Friday's trade, right now under pressure. What is doing okay? Well, I, Coal India has the 6% uptake. ITC is the result reaction maybe let's wait and watch at the broader end of the spectrum three or four names Gujarat State Petron or GSPL good numbers let's see what that one is doing if it is doing something uh, JK Cement good numbers um, let's see if that one is reacting at all uh, towards set of numbers 975 Deepak Nitride a uh, very good set of numbers let's see what that is doing in the session so two or three names that you all need to monitor I don't know if it'll be 11% uptake really but the numbers were very very strong let's see if the market does react accordingly uh, future consumer has this unnatural 14% uptake. I think it will change. Um, just two or three names again. Divan Housing Finance. Uh, I think auditors uh, resignation talks or something of that. It always keeps on coming, so you don't quite know how it will impact. But Divan Housing Finance likely to start off lower. Coffee Day, Sickle Logistics would probably be lower any which ways. Watch out for Escorts and Ashok Leyland. They hit 52-week lows and maybe they'll correct further too. And lastly, the currency and the bond deals. Very important bond triples. The currency should have weakened, should have weakened this morning. 70.19, a sharp downtick for the rupee. We'll try and get a rupee perspective as well uh, very shortly. But this is a very, very sharp downtick that we're seeing on the currency. Uh, well, this is, of course, because of what's happened across the world markets and not specifically to India. The PBOC move, dollar trending across, uh, the dollar, the US yields falling as well, all of this will have an impact here. And the bond deal should come up on your screen. Uh, they may not have reacted too much. The bond deals have been steady. The expectation is that the uh, RBI will uh, have a big policy decision or make a big policy decision. People are also talking about the possibilities of a more than 25 basis point cut. So let's wait and watch. The bond deals might not may not react too much. Again, I'm not, a, not an expert out here. We don't know how much it will happen. But the currency is certainly a big bond triple. Vipul Prasad, founder and CEO of Market Capital with us on the line, with us on the show as well. Vipul, so good having you. Thanks much for taking the time out. Um, good having you on this platform. Can I start off with a small macro view, Vipul? Uh, the, the way PBOC is reacted, 
on, on the yuan and the implications that it has had on currencies across the world. The rupee two is reacting. Do you expect these reactions to be heightened and faster over the course of the next few days? Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, good morning. So uh, the way I'm looking at these things, uh, I'll be more concerned about the way uh, the trade tussle between US and China is kind of refusing to move ahead. And uh, of course, uh, in terms of currency movements, again, uh, probably it'll be determined more by what the Fed rate is, is uh, uh, the di direction which the Fed rate is taking and the guidance that the Fed uh, is giving us. Overall, uh, from an Indian market perspective, I'll still be more concerned about the domestic economic conditions, the way things are shaping up on the NBFC front, or for that matter, in the auto sector. Uh, but overall, yes, it does look like that for the next six months, it's not going to be too great for the markets or for the economy. Although, if we are able to take a slightly longer term view, then we still have lots of reforms on the agenda. And if we if we uh, look at the ease with which the government was able to get some bills passed in the Raj Sabha in this session, uh, it looks like uh, there'll be some more action on maybe uh, policy reforms like labor or land or direct tax code also. So yeah, that's the way I'm looking at the market from here. Hmm. Okay. Well. Um the domestic cues look positive uh, at the fact that the fact that monsoons etc have all done well would also be helping uh, stay on gentlemen so much more to talk about a quick perspective from mr praveer sinha because tata par did see its revenue rise for the first quarter but that didn't reflect in the bottom line mainly because there was a one-time gain of 1900 crores in the same period last year so is fundamentally are things looking shaping up better and how will the rest of the year shape up for the company and the industry at large uh, what does the company ceo and md praveer sinha make of the new regulations surrounding this com as well to asking asking this comes to furnish letter of credit before buying power let's ask the man himself who joins us right now on the phone line mr sinha uh, good morning thanks so much for taking the call here nira jr good morning uh, some of the quarter for us were you uh, were you happy looking at the quarter or would you hope for more uh, thank you neeraj for having me on the call uh, i think uh, the quarter went very well uh, we had growth in our revenue we had growth in our ebitda and uh, we had also growth in our profit if we look from uh, on a like to like basis because uh, two of our assets which we have held for sale if we uh, do not consider for the last year's same quarter uh, we find that the growth in profit also has been something like 29 percent so uh, all in all this has been a good quarter uh, we have been able to consolidate and uh, do well in all our operating assets uh, we have been able to bring down the under recovery in Mundra. Uh, our renewable business has uh, shown a higher EBITDA because of uh, some of the plants which became operational during the year. So I think uh, uh, going uh, uh, by the results, uh, it has been a good quarter for us. You expect this uh, buoyancy, the, the, there are pockets of buoyancy within the quarter. Do you expect those pockets of buoyancy to continue in the year ahead or is it difficult to predict that right now, Mr. Sinha? I, I think uh, now, uh, what is important is uh, that uh, all our plants are operating at uh, good capacity. Uh, our solar plants are doing well. Our uh, uh, generation plants, uh, coal-based, hydro-based, all of them have done very well this quarter. Our transmission distribution business have done very well, consistent performance. And uh, also uh, our uh, uh, Mundra, fortunately, we have been able to do um, better sourcing of coal. We have been able to also uh, do better blending of coal. And uh, many of the things that we have done are to that extent institu institutionalized. And I do expect that uh, the improvements that we have carried out uh, will sustain in future too. Mm. Um, there are there are a couple of conflicting um, forces at play, Mr. Sinha. One that you know the operating in the free cash flows naturally because of the situation at hand have not been particularly well. I mean, the an analysis of the annual report also seems to suggest that at the same time maybe refinancing and lower interest rates would benefit companies uh, in your sector and you being amongst the largest ones would be a principal beneficiary. How do you expect the rest of the nine months to shape up on both of these counts? Yeah, then lower interest rate will help us. Uh, and uh, the, that has always been a challenge that our balance sheet is very, very uh, leveraged and we are taking steps to deleverage it. Uh, some of our assets are held for sale and we are 
hoping that in this financial year we'll be able to divest them and uh, get money out of them. Uh, similarly, in, uh, in terms of uh, the interest rates, uh, once it gets softened, uh, it will help us uh, to bring down our interest costs. And, uh, and to that extent, the benefit will come uh, to the company. So uh, we are definitely looking at some of the positive signs which are coming. The new uh, Ministry of Power guidelines to all the states that they should open the letter of credit and the subsequent clarification that it has also to be done for renewable projects uh, uh, gives us more confidence that our, that our cash flows will be uh, much more robust uh, going forward. So, yes, uh, some good trends are there, but uh, the sector continues to have its own challenges and uh, we are taking all steps to address them. One last question, actually, on that point, Mr. Sinha. You don't reckon that this move of, you know, this comes also having to furnish letter of credit before buying power will have an impact on the demand, base demand itself? Oh, but that uh, is always the case and it is better that uh, they buy you know, the quantum that they can pay for rather than buying and not being able to pay. So I think uh, the uh, distribution reforms which is required to a large extent and whereby they need to be commercially viable to sustain their operations is something uh, that needs to be addressed quickly. Uh, then only the sector will go through a huge change and a transformation. And uh, this is again an opportunity for Tata Power uh, considering our experience in distribution in Delhi and Mumbai and also in Ajmer. We feel we are very well equipped to participate in the distribution reforms, whether it is through the PPP route or the franchisee route or even the services that we can provide in terms of uh, the billing and collection and other network related. Uh, I think uh, we can play a very, very big role and we are looking at uh, taking a shot at it uh, as and when the sector opens up. Okay, we leave it at that, Mr. Sinha. All the best for the quarter ahead. Thank you so much for taking the time out and speaking to us at Bloomberg Quint. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's Mr. Praveer Sinha. As the pre-open rates have settled down, and just before we tell you all that you need to know, just quickly mark what the indices have done in the pre-open session. So we are likely to start off about a percent lower, and that's not a very pleasant sign. The question only is, uh, can it worsen from here? What is starting off very poorly are SBI as well as India Bulls Housing Finance. Both of those stocks are the top two losers. Namit Daga, quick thoughts out here. Ibulls, housing or SBI, uh, how do they look? Would you trade either of them? Well, uh, to my understanding, SBA is likely to see a lot of incremental shorting pressure once we started to trade below that 305 to 300 zone. Uh, uh, there would be a lot of shorting pressure because uh, ahead of the result, a lot of optimism is there and it's looking likely that uh, it will fizzle out on below that level of uh, 300 mark. A lot of lot, uh, long unwinding likely to happen. So uh, incremental shorting pressures which can take the stock below the levels of somewhere near to 290 odd uh, would be in place. Any incremental rise in the morning um, towards the 305 mark uh, should be used to go short on it. I will say it's looking like it's going to be a very volatile trade um, uh, until unless it give you a meaningful bounce towards that 500 mark. It doesn't make sense to me to be on the, uh, on the shorting side at this levels. Well, Reliance is looking weak, 1167, 1.5% lower as well. Amar Singh, quick 20 second answer. Reliance Industries, would you initiate a fresh trade? Uh, no, I would say that uh, Reliance Industries uh, overall, uh, it could see further uh, sell off towards uh, 11,000, uh, 1115.20 or levels. So, I would rather wait for the stock because uh, on the daily charts, the stock continues to be extremely bearish. Okay, so continues to be bearish. I was actually asking if maybe one can take a short call, but maybe wait for some levels to come off before maybe a trend develops. Some minutes away from market open. Let's tell you all that you need to know to stay ahead in trade today. First up, ITC's net profit jumps on better generating operating margins. Cigarette business is likely to have shown a 25 to 3% volume growth. Nestle India reports steady earnings with 11.8% growth in revenues. Operating margins remain stable at 23.2% in line with estimates. The three-day IPO of microfinance lender Spandana Spurti Financial Services opens for subscription today. The company aims to raise 1,200 crore rupees. Credit Suisse downgrades Reliance Industries to underperform. The target price has been cut to 995 rupees per share from 1350 rupees per share earlier. The brokerage remains cautious on the refining and the petrochemical cycle due to high supply pressure. Blackstone and Carlyle Group are amongst the five investors that are in talks to acquire a stake in Sriram Capital. 
and then of course a bunch of earnings that we'll be watching out for. Very quickly, just want to see what's happening in the pre-open session to GSPL, uh, Deepak Nitride as well as JK Tire, uh, JK Cement. Those three numbers I thought uh, stood out very well. Avinash was bullish about those as well. At least that reported numbers should get those stocks up on your screen. Um, GSPL about percent higher. Uh, Deepak Nitride about four percent, and JK Cement is the other one about half a percent higher. So let's wait and watch what happens to each of these names. Avinash, before we thank you, quick thoughts. Fundamentally, State Bank of India, buy right now or wait for a bit? No, I think uh, at these levels, Neeraj, uh, you know, most of the negatives seem to have been factored in, although, uh, you know, the first quarter numbers were a tad below market expectations. Uh, uh, anything below 300, I would be a buyer. I believe that uh, the coming one or two quarters, the markets would closely look at how uh, the asset quality and, you know, asset resolution issues crop up. But I think overall, uh, the kind of credit growth the, uh, you know, uh, chairman pointed, uh, 11 to 12 percent growth, is definitely reassuring. And I would believe that, you know, from these levels, the risk reward could definitely Definitely be quite good. So around 300 rupees, definitely SBI looks pretty solid within the PSU space. Okay, watch out for State Bank of India. Avinash Sanguine on the prospects. Avinash, good having you. Thanks much for taking the time out and being with us today and giving us your perspectives. Um, you know, request Vipul to stay on. We'll just come to him for a detailed chat post market open. Uh, but lots of things to juggle around with regards to earnings. And a minute left for the markets to kick start trade. So time now to get in the top trading ideas from both our technical experts first. Amar Singh, to you first. Your top call for the day. I would say that uh, uh, Gale is the stock which one can look at, which I have spoken about. So uh, the stock has a very high probability of bouncing back from the current level. So any pullback towards 123, 124 can be used as a buying opportunity with a stop loss of 118.7 and a target of 137 in the short term. Hmm. What about you, uh, Navneet? What's your top call? Well, uh, I'm suggesting that uh, the metal seems to be looking likely that they have broken down and uh, the overall global pressure is likely to kick in. And uh, to my understanding, Vedanta and Tata Steel both looks to be on the shorting side uh, on the morning, looking at the levels uh, where the uh, Hindalco opening below that uh, level of 180 is again uh, going to be breaking down below that level. So to my understanding, okay, one can still look to be stay on, on the Here's how the markets the are starting of off. Uh, we have to cut to that. I'll come back to you for your metals call in just moments from now. But the markets are starting off very, very weak. 131 points off for the Nifty. Sense about 450 points and the nifty bank well very very weak starts off about a couple of percentage points lower uh, the pre-open rates showed that none of the nifty 50 stocks were in the green so that's an ominous sign the mid caps and the small caps too would have started off weak so no surprises there but quickly get the heat map i doubt there is any green on the screen really okay a couple of stocks tcs and hdfc maybe marginally otherwise not a single stock in the green a lot of red india bulls housing finance down another four and a half percent watch out for this uh, if indeed the deal is on tenter roots, which seems to be the case, um, a lot of people believe that the respite on this might be muted. SBI, 3.5% lower. Reliance starts off 3% lower. I reckon in part due to the global pressure, in part due to the credit suisse downgrade as well. And global commodities, I think Namik Daga was speaking about it. All of them are starting off lower, and which is the worrying point? JSW, Vedanta, etc. are all starting off about 2 or 3% lower. Don't quite know how much of a short call opportunity exists there. Uh, we'll of course talk to Navneet about it in just moments from now. But essentially, not a single stock uh, worth its salt uh, over half a percent. TCS is the top gainer, and that is up only 0.48 percent. HDFC just holding out in the green, and it's CL Tech and, H and NTPC are amongst the other ones. So very defensive bent. Not surprising that should be the case. And the Bank Nifty is correcting very very viciously now 525 points down for the nifty bank and you can see why sbi is playing its part bajaj finance is down about a couple of percentage points axis bank around a couple of percentage points gone icsa bank is weak banks are looking very very wobbly right now and maybe with reason reason we're very interested to get ripple's views on all of these just a couple of pockets that i want to highlight though personally uh, companies that came out with good results and then companies that got hammered in friday's session both of these so strong results and all three are reacting positively let's see if these hold on or no so that's the first set of names and then companies that got hammered in friday straight care ratings well i think a bull might be happy seeing this because the last two days it's only gone down 20 percent now it's down only four percent which is probably not a bad sign for care ratings but still in the red even after such after, even after being what a lot of people might believe is technically oversold jktr another three percent lower jspl another four and a half percent lower so metals have certainly been taken to the cleaners uh, just before I get back to Vipul Prasad, Namneet Daga, you were making that point about metals before the markets open. All of them are starting off weak. What would your call be now? Because they're all starting 2-3% lower. 
Well, uh, normally uh, metals is a kind of a cyclical stocks, and uh, it's looking likely that uh, normally they see a follow-up move on the uh, normally the trend which is in. So, well, still uh, look for any incremental uh, intraday opportunities if you're getting on Hindalco and Tata Steel. They two, they they two stocks uh, seems to be suggesting me a lot of weakness on the downside. Uh, I'll look for a target of immediate and the levels are somewhere near to 380 on Tata Steel and uh, somewhere near to 170 on Hindalco. So, any incremental pullback in the end and during the day, I'll look to be on the short side. Well, um, Navneet, Amar, Jaiman, thank you so much for taking the time out and being with us today. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, Vipul Prasad of Magad Capital is still with us. Vipul, thanks for your patience. Um, a lot of earnings and had to juggle around them. Uh, let's get back to talking fundamentals. Now, if I can take a leaf out of the conversation that we were just having, metals. If the global picture is not looking all that good, in fact, if you will, uh, it's looking very dire right now with the retaliation that has happened from China. And if indeed U.S. were to retaliate further, commodities usually tend to get hit. You've tracked this space very, very closely in the past as well. Maybe you do that right now too. What would you believe would happen to base metals and in turn to some of the commodity-linked stocks in India? See, as you rightly pointed out, right now, uh, the biggest factor driving commodity prices is uh, the, the progress or lack of it uh, in the US and China trade talks. So uh, it's just the sentiments uh, that can uh, create a lot of uh, uh, damage to commodity prices incrementally also. When we are talking about base metal prices, actually the trading performance has been quite poor last six months, 12 months, uh, aluminum, copper, zinc. They have not been too great. Even bulk prices, bulk materials in the last say three months, cooking, uh, cooking coal and uh, 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 thermal coal. But uh, on the other hand, if you look at uh, some of the stocks in this space, uh, looks like they are coming down to valuation levels that don't leave too much of a downside incrementally uh, based on fundamentals. But the problem here is again that the more these trade talks get drawn out further into the future and the more saber rattling that happens in terms of statements from both the sides, the more will be the pressure on commodity prices. And in that case, uh, the stocks can fall further in, 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 in keeping that in mind. And this, this slide can happen very fast in, in these kind of stocks. So probably worth staying away unless one can take a real three, four, five year view. But in, in a commodity stock, why would one want to take that kind of a view? Uh, when, when you are getting a, a higher level of conviction that in the next six months is, is going to be further decline, probably worth staying away from. Okay. And uh, talking about the other side of, of this space, which is relevant in India, when we talk about steel, steel prices have not come, down, come off uh, in line with, say, base metals or in bulk, uh, bulk material prices. So that is another risk factor right now. And in case of steel, uh, there's one more factor that, that gets added on is the domestic uh, steel consumption. Because if the domestic economy is not doing too well, in the near term, probably those sentiments will also take a toll on domestic prices. So yeah, it's, it's not looking too great, in, uh, if I were to summarize right now, for commodity stocks. OK, just wondering, uh, the optimist Vipul uh, has come out and said, or a couple of optimists have come out and said that some of these steel companies, not terribly leveraged, available at three, four times, uh, pricing in more than their share of negatives. Would that be the right way to look at it? Uh, actually, even I'm an optimist, gently. <laughs> so, so yes, to some extent, this is a good uh, 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 reasoning to make. But the problem is, when we are in a market that we are in right now, wherein uh, global concerns are there, wherein uh, uh, Indian economy also seems to be in a, in a slowdown. It's your call whether you are saying it's a structural or cyclical slowdown. And on the top of that, uh, the biggest factors driving uh, uh, commodity prices globally right now are not looking in, in the best of health. So by the time you blink your eyes, you'll realize that these stocks have fallen further. So, and when I say further, it could be anything. It, it may not be limited to five or seven percent because these stocks are very unlike some of the bigger names or some some other sectors, wherein you'll say that okay, five, seven, ten percent is a big decline. So here it can be much higher than that. So yes, that that argument that you said that in terms of valuation support, there are some uh, stocks that are looking good. In fact, there are some stocks which also have incremental volume growth coming in, which have some levers based on which they can uh, reduce their sustainable cost. So basically, ROEs can improve on the from the cost side as long as 
uh, prices do not decline further but all these things uh, 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 will not get too much of a, a importance when commodity prices weaken so in that case you'll see further derating even if your earnings you'll say that okay for some time earnings can improve although that also is a question mark right now but even then there'll be a derating in these stocks so further derating could be possible you can say that yes valuation comfort is there but probably it can fall down further so, yes. so it's more like a longer term call should not be in a hurry. But I do agree some of these stocks are coming down to levels which look attractive. But for example, I'll give you, let's say some of the, some of the public sector stocks, let's say if you're talking about sale. So I was, uh, last week I was looking at it, it's trading at close to 0.5 times look. So someone can say, yeah, very interesting. Based on last 10 year average, this looks interesting. It's, it, 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 it is almost, uh, 50 percent uh, uh, discount to global uh, uh, last 10 year average but the problem is if you look at the bottoms we have seen on many occasions it go down to 0 0.3 0 0.33 0 0.34 0 0.35 so if you were to go down to those levels we are talking about another 30 percent decline although there are many indicators from a fundamental level which which are are suggesting that yes in terms of uh, the sustainability of the company competitive advantages are improving uh, efficiencies are kicking in so, but overall, it looks like worth staying away, at least in the near term. Mm. Yeah. Well, thanks, and that's, you know, I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because it just gives um, our viewers some perspective as well as to how do portfolio managers try and approach their investments. They don't necessarily look at a stock having corrected so much and therefore attractive try and look at what it could do in the near term as well. The other question that I have, Vipul, is what do you do with some of these uh, mid-rung financial names? Uh, one was the, uh, the banking names, the, 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 the DCB federal banks of the world, which hit maybe at least some of them hit a bit of a roadblock in this quarter and washed away um, what could happen over the course of the next two or three quarters if everything was good. The other is this overhang of a decision on Equitas, Ujjivan, and the small finance bank names. The results were good, but Equitas is down about 7%. So uh, a lot of people would be wondering how to approach investing here. See, in banks, uh, as you said, Equitas, so, so even the good results will be shrugged away at this juncture because here there is a very clear pocket uh, that has emerged that these are the kind of uh, uh, companies that will grab more market share and where people have more confidence about improvement in their balance sheet, improvement in their business or for that matter earnings growth and book value. And the rest uh, will always be a question mark. And in this kind of a ma market, if you have a question mark, probably we are talking about further derating. So even if the stocks have fallen, many of these, the smaller names or the uh, mid-rung names, or the, some of the stocks in the NBFC sector, even, even the good quality stocks, let's say you were talking about Bajaj Finance. So, so even if you have you are been commanding very high valuation multiples, you may be thought to be vulnerable to these kind of dynamics in the sector, what your, your cost of capital may move up, your, your availability of credit itself for you itself may, may be under a, a question mark. So for me, the way to look at this sector is, at least we are focusing more on the bigger banks, the corporate banks, uh, who are also in retail sector, who have also been trying to expand in retail markets. Uh, of course, that also will be a sort of cyclical movement, it will not be linear. But uh, if a bank has very clear roadmap, if they can say that over the next two, four, six, eight quarters, this is how we are looking at our loan book. This is how we are looking at the NPA movement and uh, our credit cost is going down. Then probably these are the banks to focus on. And that's why, as I said, some of the corporate banks, the bigger ones are the ones to focus on. In PSU also, maybe uh, for me, it's just SBI. Because the others, again, although the government has said that they're going to uh, infuse 70,000 crore, but uh, in what tranches it will come, and in any case, the public sector banks have bigger problems than just uh, issues in capital structure. So, so at least I'll stay away from uh, the mid-rung banks. And uh, of course, Bajaj Finance is not a big-rung stock, uh, mid-rung stock. But in, in their case, probably the valuations have come up to levels wherein uh, there's not much scope for any, any uh, 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 problem in terms of growth, even, even one quarter of questionable growth, and there'll be a decline in the stock. So, uh, Well, that's an important perspective as well. By the way, just want to mark a few names before we take in the final question from 
uh, Vipul. Gati is down 14%. Divan Housing is down about 10%. Equitas, we were just talking about it, it's 103. It's down about 9.5%. That's a big body blow to Equitas in the session today. A million shares traded already in the first 10 minutes of 12 minutes of trade. And um, Yes Bank, of course, is down about 5.5 at 82. So that is succumbing to some selling pressure. And all the commodity names, the metal names in particular, are all down in the session. So do watch out for those as well. Um, Vipul, my, my final question to you is uh, on oil and gas. Now, a couple of things happening. Uh, Reliance, of course, ceases to be only an oil and gas play. It's also a telecom play as much. But crude is coming off and coming off quite strongly. And if indeed the trade war is staying for the near term, then it's difficult to see an uptick in crude prices. How do you, we all know that it impacts the macro well. I'm just trying to figure out and understand how does it impact the micro. Do you have any thoughts here? See, uh, from a macro perspective, probably we, we, we all get impacted here because uh, crude prices, if they are on a structural decline, and I believe in that, if, if we look at, say, three, four, five years uh, view, crude prices definitely are on a decline structurally. So in that sense, uh, India, India should be happy about it in every sense. Uh, if we are looking at stock specifics, uh, oil and gas, refining and marketing, uh, of course, they have corrected quite a lot. Many of those stocks are looking good, but somehow we are unable to convince ourselves from the point of view of regulatory intervention, because uh, uh, there can there can be periods wherein these stocks do very well and again they can decline. But uh, it's very difficult to second guess what the government is trying to do. So although technically uh, these these markets have been uh, uh, opened up, so petrol diesel prices are no more administered, but still once in a while when prices go up substantially or go down substantially, the government does come in with their own uh, uh, plans. So for me, oil and gas, we don't look at much. Reliance is one stock that may be interesting. Of course, it has come off quite a bit. And uh, uh, in terms of uh, uh, the last qu quarter, it did not look too great. But one angle that I'm looking at is that uh, they are making a decent progress on deleveraging their balance sheet. That has been a big concern for many for some time. And also, we have to remember that uh, they are making good strides in, in retail as well as in telecom. And in telecom, they are in a, uh, a situation wherein they are calling the shots. They will take the call when do they decide to increase the ARPUs. The other two big players will follow suit because they have been actually struggling. The other two players have been struggling because of the uh, pricing policy of Reliance uh, uh, so in a way, they are in a driver's seat in, in uh, telecom and in retail also they've been doing well. So, I, uh, so almost 28-30% of their EBIT is now coming from these two uh, uh, segments, which means that at some point in time as it grows further, the valuation multiples will have one re reason to, to improve because obviously oil and gas will have a limitation for valuation multiples. So in a way, this is a cause for some re-rating in the next one to two years and also about the deleveraging thing. I, I think they're moving in the right direction on that also. So at some point in time, probably Reliance will be worth looking at. But yeah, coming back to oil, uh, as I said, oil and gas, refining and marketing companies, we are not very, very excited about. Mm. Okay, not very attractive. Uh, Vipul, so good having you. Uh, the first time that we're talking, I'm glad that we could do this today. Look forward to having you more often on the forum. Thanks a lot, Neeraj. It was great being here. Thank yeah. you. Well, that's an important view from somebody who looks at a lot of nuances very, very closely. Vipul Prasad of Magat Capital. The markets are looking very poor now. It's worsened during the course of the day. The intraday would help you. 2.2% down for the Nifty Bank, a percent and a half for the Nifty 50, 165 gone. And the Nifty Bank is the principal culprit, 623 points. And I'm not even talking about the broader market pain. By the way, uh, something that all of us should monitor very closely and something that we'll talk about during the course of the day, the rupee. 70.47, that's a very sharp knockdown for the currency in a single session. And believe me, this has got to do with what's happening uh, around the world. The PBOC move, the weakness there, the dollar strength across would definitely impact the currency. So not surprised at this happening too. Let's wait and watch what happens during the course of the session. We take a break. On the other side of the break, discuss the first quarter earnings with Hiranan Sablani of Astral Polytechnic and Siddharth Mohanty of LIC Housing Finance.